Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. It was 68 years ago that Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and changed the game forever. His legacy is something that still lives strong, and today we celebrate its lasting impact. Along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby, delighted you could join us on this April 15th of 2015. Rangers and Angels uh, hooking it up today, and the Rangers are turning to a new member of the uh, pitching rotation. That would be hard-throwing right-hander Anthony Renato. You know, Anthony Renato, Buzz, has done about everything he can do in the minor leagues. He deserves to be in the big leagues. With the Red Sox before the trade, he was the pitcher of the year in the Eastern League. Then he was the pitcher of the year in the AAA International League. He's off to a great start so far this year. He didn't make the team out of spring training, but his first AAA start was very good. Five innings, didn't give up a run, didn't walk anybody. Struck out six, only threw 76 pitches, 51 of them were strikes. So he's a young pitcher, high draft choice out of LSU. He's ready to pitch in the big leagues, and he gets another opportunity today. And he'll be facing the Angels for the first time. And as a matter of fact, there's only one Angel that's uh, batted at all against him. So the Rangers looking to put up some runs early behind Anthony Renato. We'll come back to the starting lineup in the first pitch right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. 
The EcoBoost Challenge is on at your Texas Ford dealer. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. By AT&T, U-verse TV. U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Well, a simply gorgeous afternoon here at Globe Live Park. Beautiful sunny skies. A light breeze drifting in from right center field. Anthony Renato, his first major league start of the year before we get things underway. Let's head down and check in with Emily Jones. Em? Yeah, Buzz, Anthony Renato taking his call up in stride. It happened to him four times last year in Boston. Went three and four over seven starts over four different stints in the big leagues for the Red Sox. Here's what he had to say yesterday when he arrived in Arlington. Fortunately, I've been through this situation before last year with the Red Sox up and down. So um, I was just really just honestly taking it day by day and just trying to taking the approach that I was pitching today in Colorado Springs. And if I got the call, it was great. And that's that's where I'm at right now. And now I'll just change the approach. And so a slightly different setting, a slightly different lineup, but hopefully Anthony Renato will be able to continue his early season success that he had in the minor leagues here at the big league level, fellas. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, I think he, when he looks out uh, over center field, he won't see the Rockies out there. That'll be a big difference, <laughs> as you would in Colorado Springs. Anyway, uh, Renato facing the Angels. Mike Socha has this lineup. Tom Greve will tell you about it for Los Angeles. Eric Ibar leads off at shortstop, followed by the center fielder, Mike Trout. Albert Pujols is the DH. Matt Joyce bats fourth in left field. David Freeze bats fifth. He plays third base. The catcher, Chris Iannetta, moves up to sixth in the lineup. Efren Navarro will get the start today at first base. Batting eighth is the right fielder, Colin Cowgill. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Johnny Giabotella. And the Angels facing this tall 25-year-old right-hander, 6'7", inch, Anthony Renato. Tom told you the international league pitcher of the year in 2014. Four basic pitches, but boy, his curveball is really a fantastic out pitch. It was rated the best curveball in the Boston organization the last two years. And he starts Eric Ibar off with strike one. Anthony Renato uh, working over the top with that delivery, and boy, a hitter, you, he's going to look like he's 15 feet tall out there coming downhill at you. Stands fairly straight up when he works. Extends that hand and arm up over his right shoulder. Fouled back. Yeah, he's not quite as tall as Chris Young. Chris Young is, what, 6'10 or right. 6'11? Yeah. But it really works in Chris's favor being that tall. He had a nice season last year in the big leagues. Not a real hard thrower, Chris Young. But very successful, and I think that's probably the reason why Buzz so tall and thrown from that arm angle was difficult for the hitters to contend with. Well, that first curveball uh, kind of stayed up a little bit. Ibar spoiling it. Still a ball and two strikes. A 70 degree afternoon here under brilliant blue skies. Sunny conditions. Absolutely perfect for this Wednesday afternoon matinee affair. Two and two now. Ibar, a 214 average, no home runs, and one RBI. Ibar uh, moving back up to that leadoff spot here this afternoon. Two for eight in the series. And another foul ball. And without Cole Calhoun in the lineup, Mike Sosha is looking for a leadoff guy. He likes to bat Ibar down a little bit in the lineup. Pretty productive hitter last year. Ibar knocked in 68 runs, had 30 doubles. The breaking ball that is low and inside, so the count has gone full. Ibar leading off for the Angels. He'll be followed by the reigning MVP in the American League, Mike Trout. Renato into the wind, the payoff pitch. Looked out to left field, and Delano De Shields right there, one gone. And let's take a look at the rest of the Ranger defense. It's delivered to you today by Break Check. And you saw Delano De Shields in left field. Leonis Martin in center, and Jake Smolinski is the right fielder today. 
Adam Rosales to start at first. Odor and Andrews up the middle. Beltre at third. And Carlos Corporan is catching here this afternoon. The one out here is Trout, who steps in with the 393 mark. He is the one angel that has really been hot in the early going. And that's no surprise. A home run and three driven in. Trout last year, the unanimous MVP. And there's a good breaking ball from Renato. That's the third ball we had talked about. And Trout finds himself down in the hole at 0-2. Trout has hit safely in all eight of the games the Angels have played this year. Yesterday, after the first time up, first time up, Nick Martinez threw Trout a fastball down and out over the plate, and he ripped it for a double. After that, Martinez had good success jamming him up around the belt or a little higher on the inside part of the plate. I'm sure that's the game plan today, if possible, I'm sure. Anthony was trying to do that with that last pitch. One two offering. The left center field that's going to fall in for a base hit. And Trout is aboard with a one out single. And he didn't hit it sharply but got it in the right spot. This looks like a breaking ball. That he's trying to throw down in a way. Mm -hmm. But I guess if you're going to hang one, that's where you want to hang it to Trout is up and in like that. Because even though it wasn't a fastball, it still jammed him. He just muscled it for a base hit into left field. You don't want to hang it down around the knees and out over the plate. Yeah, on our replay, that looked like the slider that slider, maybe, yeah. Anthony's uh, second best breaking ball. In any event, here's Pools. He takes a strike on the inside corner. Pujols 0 for 5 in the series, although the Rangers have uh, not shown the inclination to really go after Albert. He's had a few walks, 148 his average. And you can understand that Pujols hit 314 against the club last year, so he's not a guy that you want to really give the opportunity to do a lot of damage. That home run came last Sunday for Pujols and vaulted him into 18th place all time on the home run list. 0-2 pitch coming. Nice try by Renato using that fastball and he didn't miss by much. Gave Pujols something to think about. And looking at our Fox track, he Give him more been, than something to think about. Yeah. That couldn't have... Trout at first had a stolen base uh, last night. Renato keep an eye on him. And there's a the updated Fox track. We apologize for that one before. Just outside. And Pujols, he's seen enough pitches in there where I think when, when the ball starts in there, he is uh, throwing the head of that bat out in a hurry. And that was about, you know, what would you say, about 90 feet foul when it finally landed? It probably. <laughs> where it would have landed on the ground is probably even more than that. <laughs> Still one and two as Renato sets. Pools trying to get out of the way. Carlos Corporan getting after that ball in the dirt. Two and two now. Oh, if you miss with your curveball, that's where you want to miss to a guy like Pools out of the strike zone. You want to miss up and in the strike zone with that pitch. Yeah, I would have to think for Anthony Renato, that's probably the biggest difference between his success at AAA and, and the big leagues. You won't get as many guys swinging at that that 12 to 6 curveball in the dirt as often. And they'll do more damage when you hang it, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think the idea that major league hitters tend to lay off more bad pitches, uh, that doesn't mean they're perfect about it, but it 
tend to lay off a few more than guys at AAA. Yep. Two balls, two strikes. And he skies one to just barely in the outfield at second base. Odor makes the grab. Nice pitch by Rolado to get the pop out. Two gone for Matt Joyce. Hey, one thing. Pujols has hit a couple of foul balls hard this series, but for the most part, he has uh, been a little bit off balance on a lot of pitches. Yeah, that, that pitch was not an off-speed pitch. It was well located, had some good movement on it. I think the sinking action to that pitch brought it out of the strike zone and caused Pujols to reach for it like that. No, oh, with two outs, the only uh, member of the Angels that has had an at-bat against Anthony Renato before, and that would be Matt Joyce. Joyce had two appearances, went 0 for 2 against uh, Renato last year. Renato with those seven games in a uh, Red Sox uniform at the tail end of 2014. Actually, four different stints, but... The majority of the work he got was at the tail end of the season. Last three ball games, Matt Joyce starting to pick things up a bit. Mike Trout, the lead from first. And the strike on the inner part. Two and one. Anthony Renato, a New Jersey native. Set for the pitch. Got him on the fist. Two and two. Take a look at our Kubota power stats. We'll talk about Anthony Renato uh, going up the ladder. Excellent uh, numbers no matter what level he has pitched at. Pitcher of the year in the International League last year and also in the Eastern League the year before. Signed out of LSU. A, uh, a three year starter for the Bayou Bengals. Also won the College World Series, capturing the uh, final game against the Texas Longhorns. All right, look at those two years double A and triple A, those two years, his opponent's batting average was about 215. So he was very difficult to hit at the minor league level. There goes Trout. The pitch is high. The throw is late. And Trout not only got a big jump, he picked the right pitch. Breaking ball that hung up there. So Trout, with a stolen base, gets himself in a scoring position with two outs. Full count to Matt Joyce with two outs. With the off speed pitch, and Joyce able just to get a piece of it. We're not on out. 25 pitches in this uh, rather lengthy first inning. The trout tends to slide head first, and with all the things that can go wrong with a head first slide to your wrist, your fingers, and your hands, I'm sure Mike Sosa cringes every time that. He goes as hard as he can into a base with a head first slide. Got him swinging. Into the glove of Carlos Corporan. And Anthony Renato works around a one out single to Trout and a stolen base. One left. Half an inning in the books. And he goes nothing. Rangers coming up.
Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers lineup. A little bit different look today. Delano DeShields will get the start and lead off in left field. Rubnet Odor, again, top of the order, will bat second. Adrian Beltre and Prince Fielder are third and fourth, followed by the right fielder Jake Smolinski in the fifth spot. Elvis Andrus, after a home run last night, continues in the sixth spot today. Adam Rosales gets the start at first base. He'll bat seventh. Leonis Martin in center field is eighth. And catching today and batting ninth is Carlos Corporan. That lineup is facing the left-hander Hector Santiago. Dealt strike one to Delano de Shields. And he deals strike two. Santiago, a 27-year-old. He's 3-0 in this ballpark. 2-0 last year. Basic uh, fastball changeup artist with that changeup being a screwball. Learned that pitch uh, about three years ago. If his command is good with uh, both the fastball and, and screwball, he can really be tough on right hand. There's that fading action of that screwball into Shields. Down on strikes to start things for the Rangers. Let's take a look at the uh, Angel defense behind Santiago. Brought to you by Steele. Left field, Matt Joyce. Center field, Mike Trout. And in right field, Colin Cowgill. Efren Navarro, the start at first base today. Gia Botella and Ibar up the middle. David Freeze at third. Chris Iannetta is behind the plate. And Hector Santiago in his second year with the Angels on the hill. Moved at Odor. It's a towering fly ball to right. He just missed that. Cowgill makes the grab for out number two. Had a pretty good idea of what he was looking for and got, went up there and got it and didn't miss it by much. Well, Santiago's had a losing record the last couple of years, but a solid ERA, well under four. If he's had any problems, one of the problems would be he's probably walked a few too many guys the last couple of years. Opponent's batting average in the 240s, so you know he's been tough to hit. Got that little perky jerky thing he does right there in his delivery, which may or may not affect the hitter. But he's been tough to hit. Last year he had a six and nine record, but he had seven no decisions in starts where he allowed one or fewer runs. That's some bad luck right there. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to get a, get a good winning record going when you get one or no runs. In fact, it's, there's only been three pitchers in American League history with at least seven no decisions in games where they allowed one or fewer runs. So that show you what bad luck it was. Hardly ever happens. I know one of them has to be uh, Felix Hernandez. He went that one year, and I, I don't think the, the Mariners scored more than 10 runs for him all year. <laughs> well, the Angels scored three or fewer in 16 of Santiago's 24 starts last year. Now, Santiago being careful with uh, Adrian Beltre has fallen behind three and one. Beltre, a 171 mark, one home run, accounting for his only RBI. Santiago comes back with a knee-high fastball to fill the count. If Beltre is able to get aboard here in the first, Prince Fielder handling the DH chores waits in the on-deck circle. Santiago with a payoff pitch. Just inside. With that fastball tried to get it to come back to the corner. Beltre takes it. Horrible two-out walk. Santiago, for the most part, has pitched okay against the Rangers. He had one start that's kind of skewed his earned run average. Close to a strike down and in. Rangers scored seven runs in one inning against him back in September of last year in Anaheim. Not his number that day. He's fielder. Looks at strike one. Prince off to a Blazing start, 405 average. And he has uh, fared well against Santiago, four or six for 15. Trying to pick up Beltre from first here in the first inning. One ball and one strike. Take a look at our forward leaderboard. Uh, Major League Baseball this season, the hits leaders. 
to see Prince Fielder tied for third behind Adrian Gonzalez and Miguel Cabrera. Prince has reached base either by a hit or a walk in all of the Ranger games so far. Finds himself down in the count, though, to Santiago and a ball and two strikes. Santiago came over to the Angels uh, prior to last year, a three-way trade. Arizona and the White Sox and the Angels hooked up to uh, exchange players. Mark Trumbo, the main man from the Angels, going to Arizona. We'll tap her back to the mound, and that'll do it. So the two-out walk to Beltre, no damage. He is stranded. We'll go to the second inning here at Globe Live Park. Rangers nothing, Angels nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. A scoreless ball game as we head to the second inning. Anthony Renato now will face David Freeze, Chris Ionetta, and Efren Navarro. David Freeze, a 194 average as he begins things. Three home runs, five driven in. Renato, good fastball to the outside corner. David Freeze 0 for 4 last night. 3 out of 11 in the series. Renato at 6 7. He listed to 230 pounds. Well, he jams Freeze. A little looper is going to fall into center field for a leadoff base hit. Well, that's too bad. He made his pitch. You know, before we tell you about Chris Iannetta, let's check in with Jim Knock. Jim? All right, Buzz, how about some Rangers giving back to the community? Recently, the Robinson Chirinos Foundation paid a visit to the Arlington Life Shelter, handed out blankets, scarves, and also some nice warm headgear. Giving back to the people that are really struggling and having a hard time, that's what moved me to be here today. And it's a blessing to, to do this for, for our community here in Arlington. There you go. So Rangers giving back to the community and we'll feature more Rangers throughout the season. These little guys ready for baseball. This guy, look at this buzz, a nice little sweater on this afternoon. Sweater <laughs> weather, huh? All right. Yeah. Yeah, you get in the shade, it's gotta be a little bit a little bit cooler with that breeze. But enjoying the sun right about now. That's great. Chris Ionetta kind of got low bridged by that uh, first fastball from Anthony Renato. Well, Anthony made a nice pitch on the inside part of the plate to freeze that he fought off that little blooper in the left field. So kind of continuing 
what Nick Martinez did last night. Yep. Moving that fastball in on the fists and. It's pretty obvious when you look at the pitch tracks and watch the swings and see where it hits the bat. The success you can have if you're able to do that locate it where you want to. Above the belt and inside right there a little bit inside there but you see him trying to do that. CB Buckner down there uh, asked for his opinion whether it was a swing or not he said no. That's no, two and one. You know one of the biggest cliches in baseball from the time that I first played professional baseball when you ask someone how to pitch a hitter. The standard answer that you hear most is fastballs in, sliders yep. away. That's right. And, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about. Guys don't like to hit good fastballs in. And that check swing almost was a lot of trouble, but landed about uh, four or five feet foul down that right side. You know, high and tight, low and away. And that uh, gets most guys yeah. out if you can execute that. The key is being able to execute that. Right, exactly. It's a good plan, but yeah. you still have to do it. I think when Emily was talking to Ugnet Odor last night about uh, watching more pitches, and Ugnet said, "Well, you just don't swing at the bad ones. <laughs> that's that's great, but it's a good formula. It's yeah. not that easy, though. <laughs> I hope it is for him. Still two and two. Renato out of uh, Jackson, New Jersey." Rangers drafted him out of high school 2011. Excuse me, 2008. He declined to sign and went uh, went down to LSU. Probably a good move on his part. Give him, give him a chance to. Pitching a real good college program and get that experience. Pitched to the Cape Cod League in 2010. Payoff pitch. Line drive by Beltre and down the left field line. I think Adrian might have ticked it. Around second, headed for third is Freeze. And into second base standing with a double is Chris Ionetta. Yeah, that looked like that ball was hit pretty hard. So that if Adrian didn't touch it, it probably would have rolled down into the corner much quicker. So he must have gotten the top of his glove on the ball to slow it down just a little bit. Not a bad pitch. Ran the pitch in on the fists. But a good job by Ionetta. You can see him keep keep his hands in mm -hmm. and get pretty good part of the bat on the ball. And there it is, just going yeah. off the side of Adrian's glove. Just ticked it. No, the Angels have something going here against Renato a single a double runners at second and third and nobody out a scoreless ball game Efren Navarro is the hitter the Rangers will play the infield back they will uh, give up the run for the out if they can keep this from becoming a, a big inning for the Angels Navarro limited the bats this spring a 429 average three for seven Saw him come off the bench last night as a, a defensive replacement. Renato studying the signs. And working from the stretch with runners at second and third. One and one. What made Renato work? He had a lot of foul balls against him. Uh, got his pitch total up to 38, 25 strikes, 13 balls. In the dirt. And Carlos Corporan making sure he smothered that one around home plate. Two and one now the count. Angels is a team hitting at 215 in the early going. They have uh, raised their on base percentage significantly, though, the last couple of games. They're up to 275 now. That's still 12th in the league. Popped up foul. That will reach the seats behind home plate. Angels have 
Nebraska in their first eight ball games have scored just 24 runs, exactly three runs a game. Mike Sosha's club, his 16th year with the Angels, saw them win 98 games last year, the most in Major League Baseball. Renato ready for a 2-2 pitch. Call strike three. Big strikeout. Yeah, Second and third. And nobody out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Sonia hey. ringing him up. That pitch right up the knees on the inside corner. He's kind of backing off the plate on that one. I think he's just surprised to see it. Not much doubt that it's a strike. Our camera is a little bit off to the right on, on our view, and sometimes the ball looks outside to a right-hand hitter or inside mm -hmm. to a left-hand hitter, and it's really not. And that's just the angle that we have. So several times where I'll say that ball looks like it's on the outside corner of the right-hand hitter, and then you see the, the pitch tracks, and it shows it's right down the middle of the plate. Well, a very big strikeout. Of Navarro, Colin Calgill taking the first breaking ball for ball one. Calgill, 235, a home run, two driven in. That home run came here on the Monday night game. The pitch stays high, it's two and nothing. Anthony Renato trying to get a feel for his breaking ball, the consistency of it. Ionetta in second, peering in. And now time is called. Carlos Corporan. You can go out and have a chat with Renato. Calgary last year set you know, pretty much uh, career highs in every offensive category. 65 hits among those uh, career best. Versatile outfielder for the Angels, but can play all three outfield positions. Now we're set to go at 2-0. and Now 3-0. and Calgill hitting eighth. Johnny Giobatella, the second baseman, will follow Calgill. You can tell where Corporan is setting up. He's setting up about six inches outside. His right leg is all the way over in the near the right side of the batter's box to Cowgill, almost like they're hoping he'll swing at a pitch six inches outside. But yeah. if he doesn't, they'll take the walk, load the bases, and try and get a double play here. And Mike Maddox out there to uh, just calm things down a little bit. Get uh, both Carlos Corporan and Anthony Renato on the the first page of their book on how they're going to work to Gio Botella. They're looking for that ground ball double play and how they're going to go about it. In yesterday's ball game, Nick Martinez struggled a little bit in the first couple of innings with his command. In fact, in the second inning with one out, the Angels had the bases loaded and Ibar hit a ball to Rubned at second base. The Rangers turned a double play to get out of the inning, trying to duplicate that today. Mm -hmm. Renato has had good stuff today, but he's had to throw a lot of pitches. This would be his 46th pitch, which would be a little bit of a struggle through two innings, but he can get out of it, hopefully like Nick did last night right. with a ground ball. And almost identical to what uh, Nick Martinez did last night. A lot of pitches, first mm -hmm. two innings, and really settled down and did a great job through seven. Giovatella takes a strike. It is nothing in one. 273 average for Giovatella. One RBI as the base is full of Angel teammates. One out here in the second inning. Bernardo continuing to work from the stretch. One and one. Renato peering in for the sign from Corporan. 
the big right-hander ready to work. Out of play down the right side. That peels back into the crowd. A ball and two strikes. Now one thing about Renato with his curveball, having a man on third, if he doesn't have very good command of it, or if he's not really sure of his command, he has to rely on his catcher to be ready to block that thing in the dirt if he's going to bounce one up there. And uh, that's kind of a disadvantage for a guy that doesn't throw a slider very much. Slider's a lot easier to, to work with a man at third base. Left center field. That is in between. Leonis Martin diving in front of uh, Delano De Shields. Can't make the play. Two runs are in on a single by Johnny Giovatella, and that just perfectly placed between Leonis Martin and Delano De Shields out there. Well, Leonis was playing Giovatella over in right center field. It was not a hard hit ball. It's almost like a semi fly ball to left center field. But because of where he started in right center field, he just couldn't get to it. High fastball, he kind of popped it up to left center field. He just hit it to the part of the park where there was no one playing. Now both David Freeze and Chris Ionetta scoring. Colin Calgill stops at second. So first and second now, a couple of runs across. And the Angels have the top of their order. Eric Ibar, a fly ball to left as he began things today. Well, base runners held up to wait and see what was going to happen. So the Rangers catch a little bit of a break there instead of a ball falling in and maybe all three guys scoring mm -hmm. and having it be a double. It's still first and second. You get a double play and get out of the inning. Renato back to Ibar. A throw to second, going to third. The throw is late as Cowgill looked like he really baited Carlos Corporan into making that throw behind him to second base and then took off to third. Yeah, I think he just got out so far in no man's land that he had no choice but to go to third base. Watch him. He takes a little stutter step back to second. And realizes there's no way he can get back. Yeah. But he was so far off the base that he still got to third base. Much you can do about that as a catcher. You see him out there in no man's land and you fire it. And... The bun is on. It is down. Beltre fields and throws out Ibar. Well, what a bunt though by Ibar. A kind of a safety squeeze that gets the run home. And the Angels take a three to nothing lead. And took a great play by Beltway to keep that from being a butt base hit. That was a beautiful play by Adrian. And good play. It's not a squeeze play because the runner wasn't running on the play. You called it, Buzz. It's a safety squeeze. You lay the bunt down, and then it's up to the third guy at third base to react. He knows where Beltre's playing. He sees the bunt down and knows he can score, so Cowgill takes off. If it's a bunt back to the pitcher or a very hard bunt to third base, then he'd stop and just go back to third base. Mm -hmm. well, the Angels with a three spot here on the second, and Mike Trout trying to make it more. Trout had a base hit to left field in the first inning. Trout now with that average back up over 400, 414. And he is batting with Giovatella at second base. Two and zero. Oh. Anthony Renato. A difficult second inning. Angels made him throw 27 pitches in the first inning. In this second inning, they have uh, made him go double that total. He's kind of in the same position that Drew Rosinski was in, in last night's ball game. Uh -huh. This stage of the game. Falling behind Mike Trout, three balls, no strikes. You know, Trout continues this inning against Renato. You've got Albert Pujols waiting to be next. Outside, ball four. Trout aboard for the second time. Now Pujols, that is the uh, second walk 
of the inning and of the game issued by Renato. Anthony threw 76 pitches in his triple-A start. First triple-A start of the year. Spread out over five innings. Anthony Bass loosening in the uh, Ranger bullpen. There's Pujols who popped out to second his first time up there. One ball, no strikes. Corporan going to flash out some uh, defensive assignments just in case Gio Botella and Trout take off. And the Ranger infield uh, shifted around to the left for Albert Pujols. Breaking ball, and that cuts the strike zone in half. One and one. Pujols, so far this year, not productive with uh, runners in scoring position. And that's a fate that most of the Angel hitters have faced. I mentioned the Angels uh, just not scoring runs very efficiently. Strike two. We're not able to back up a, like a slider with a good fastball. That Pujols looking for something else. Gio Atella at second. He is trailed by Mike Trout over at first. Angels have put three runs across here in the second. He was just able to get a piece of that curveball. Anthony's obviously having to throw a lot of pitches. And one of his problems has been they fouled a lot of pitches off, yeah. too. That's 60 pitches jammed into two innings. That's a lot of work. One and two to Captain Pujols. Up the middle. Elvis has a go under his glove into left center field. Gia Vitello scores all the way around to third is Trout. The Angels lead it four to nothing and still have runners at the corner. I'm not sure what happened on that ball. Look. Like it didn't take any, much of a hop. It looked like a ball Elvis was going to be able to get to and flip to second base. Let's see if we can see what happened on that ball. Well, he got to it, just went under his glove. Yeah. So he, didn't, he expected it to come up and it never came up. No. Nope. Well, we'll uh, wait for the official scorer's ruling on that. I imagine they're going to give him an error. In any event, the Angels have pushed across four runs. And Matt Joyce, the ninth hitter to come to bat in this inning, will step to the plate. Now they're going to give him a base hit. Well, Pujols drives in his fourth run of the year. Matt Joyce struck out in the first inning. Slicing away from Leonis Martin, a long run. He can't get there. It is by him and headed to the track. Pujols around third will come in to score. Two more runs on the board, and the Angels now lead it six to nothing. Well, it's a second ball. It's almost a carbon copy of each other. Lazy balls, lazy fly balls to left center field at a time when Martin was playing over right center field. And he just wasn't able to get to him. Neither ball hit very hard. They were just very well placed. Well, that double is going to be it for Anthony Renato. As uh, Jeff Bannister out, and uh, he will make the motion to the bullpen. He wants Anthony Bass to come on in. So a tough second inning spells the end of the afternoon for Anthony Renato. Pitching change underway at Grove Live Park. We'll be back right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Our AT&T U-verse Rewind. Heading back to the home opener. Anthony Bass taking over for the injured Derek Holland. And Bass, boy, he was stellar on the mound and off the mound. Coming off to make a great defensive play. Five solid innings of work for Bass. And he really did uh, a great job of not only calming the game down, but saving the bullpen. Uh, Pitched deeply enough into the game that uh, didn't have to use anybody until the uh, seventh inning. Well, Bass on for his third outing of the season, the 129 average. Opponents hitting just 200 against Bass. He takes over for Anthony Renato. Angels six runs on five hits and two walks in the inning. And David Fries, who started this inning with a single, is up there against Bass. And he peeled down to C.B. Buckner at first. Said, yep, he went around. It's strike one. Anthony Bass, a 27-year-old right-hander out of the Detroit area. Ahead of the count. Nothing in two. Bass last year spent most of the year with the uh, Houston Astros, 21 appearances. He was one and one with a 6.33. Right hander is ready, nothing in two to freeze. David Freeze, of course, Ranger fans will remember and not too fondly about the uh, 2011 World Series. Freeze hitting that ball to right field in the ninth inning of game six. No, we don't need to go there anymore. Freeze gone on strikes and the side is retired but six runs across for the Halos after one and a half, six nothing Angels. is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. The EcoBoost Challenge is on at your Texas Ford dealer. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. And the Rangers need to do some driving of their own. They are trailing now six to nothing. And this is their second at bat of the afternoon. Jake Smolinski starting things off. He'll be followed by Elvis Andrews and Adam Rosales. Smolinski still looking for his first hit of the year. He is 0 for 10 at the moment. And he has the count now of one ball and one strike. Angels send 10 men to the plate 
six of them score in the top of the second inning. Anthony Renato just couldn't find a, a way to get that final out. A lot of foul balls. Wasn't helped out too much by the defense. But in any event, Eagles made Renato work over 60 pitches in his two innings of work here today. It was a shot fair down the third baseline for Smolenski. Into the corner, Joyce digging it out. And Jake into second, a stand-up leadoff double. Well, that's Jake's first hit of the season. He was 0 for 10. But in those 10 at-bats, he struck a couple of balls sharply. Just didn't have anything to show for it. But it still feels good to, to get that first hit. It's one thing to know that you hit some balls hard, but when you're 0 for 10, that's small consolation. You want some results. And he turned around that high fastball and ripped it down the line for his first hit. So that feels good for the Rangers. Feels good for Jake, too. The freeze even was shading him that way by a step and still couldn't get to it. So the first Ranger hit of the afternoon, uh, along with Smolenski's first hit of the year. Here's Elvis. And he almost takes uh, strike one. Andrews hitting sixth for the uh, second straight day. That is first home run. First Ranger home run, too, of the year. Last night, 184 average. Santiago's next pitch. Sunbathed crowd out here on a Wednesday afternoon at the Love Live Park. Jackie Robinson Day 2015. All the players, of course, and the coaches and managers wearing the number 42 to honor the legacy of Jackie Robinson. His 68th anniversary. Ed Robinson breaking into the major leagues and breaking the color barrier and opening up baseball to everybody. A retired number out there in left field and facing of the second deck. Almost to right field. Calgill retreats. Makes the catch, tagging a second, moving to third. Jake Spolinski. And he is there with one out now for Adam Rosales. Well, important here if you're the Rangers to come back and at least score a run after getting the leadoff double. Granted, you're not going to catch up in the span of three or four hitters in your trail by six, but chip away at it and See if you can get uh, the starter, Santiago, in trouble. Make him get his pitch count up and get him out of there. Yeah, if Elvis is able to make the play on that ground ball, then it's still a big inning. A three-run inning turned into a six-run inning, though. Reached down, didn't come up with that ball. One ball and a strikes to Rosales. Adam, 0 for 5 in the early going. This is his second start of the campaign. Ionetta flashing the signs out. Angel infield playing back. And Santiago missing with that breaking ball. Going back to last September, Adam Rosales, oh, for his last 21, but this is the guy who was the uh, Rangers player of the month last August. Check swing. And he went around. The crowd didn't think so. About 25,000 umpires have said no, but and one down at first base if you'd yep. Two and one. Rosales in the spring got out to a real slow start, but then really turned it on. Makes that pitch just off the outer edge. And the count goes to three and one. Rosales trying to get aboard to join Smolinski on base. Leonis Martin, the Rangers center fielder, will be next. Popped up. Off of the mask, Chris Ionetta has a play. That's out number two. And Rosales fouls out on a 3 1 pitch.
Well, it's a high pitch, maybe a little bit too high to get a hold of. Generally, on a high fastball, you're pretty happy to get that kind of a pitch with a man on third base and less than two outs. Because it's a pitch that you have a little bit easier time hitting in the air to the outfield. That one, he hit in the air, but was unable to get enough of it to get it to the outfield. A little bit out of the strike zone, maybe. Leonis Martin takes strike one. Leonis at 154 with his average for the year, the second day in a row now that he has been out of the leadoff spot. He has had success against Santiago. That 385 average will tell you. Santiago almost threw under the backstop. Jake Polinski, the runner at third, had a leadoff double, advanced to third on Elvis Andrews' fly ball. Gonzalez fouled out. And Martin trying to pick up Smolinski with a count of one ball and one strike. Hit pretty well to right center field. Trout. Long run into the alley there in time and makes the catch. Well, it looked promising for the Rangers, but they strand the leadoff double. Jake Smolinski at it. After two, it's the Angels six, the Rangers nothing. On Fox Sports Southwest. Join the Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation and the Park Place dealerships for Triple Play. This year's Triple Play game show spectacular will feature your favorite Ranger players, a silent auction, and a night of Christmas or circus-themed fun. A little early for Christmas. Visit TexasRangers.com slash Triple Play to learn more about how you can support the Rangers Foundation. I think there's some stores will tell you it's never too early to advertise Christmas. Well, you might be right about that, Tom. <laughs> it's be that. December 1st, <laughs> and it was after Thanksgiving. Now it's about the beginning of November, I think. La Labor Day, I think. Yeah, they started. <laughs> the little kids just can't take all the anticipation. Yeah. Chris Iannetta starting things off for the Angels here in the third. Iannetta, Navarro, and Calgill facing Anthony Bass. Pass came on to get the final out of the second inning. Anthony Renato worked the first inning in two thirds. Gave up six earned runs on six hits, two walks, two strikeouts. Nothing in two to Ionetta, who had a double in that six run outburst. Anthony going right after the hitters aggressively. He's thrown seven pitches, six of them have been strikes. Bass to the wind. One and two. Anthony originally with the 
the San Diego Padre organization. This is that pitch inside. Went from the Padres to the Astros prior to uh, the 2014 season. And then the Rangers signed him as a free agent. He's gone full now to Ionetta after being up in the count 0 and 2. Ionetta to be followed by Efren Navarro. Line drive, Beltray reaches up and plucks it out of the air. He well, got the first one by him in the second inning. That one he tried to get another one by him, but Adrian was able to get that one. First one went just off the top of his glove. There's another smash. They both hit extremely hard. Cat like reactions. That might have stung a little bit. That looked like it got it right in the palm of the glove. No, one gone here is Navarro. One ball, no strikes. Navarro, a strikeout. He was the first out of the second inning. Odor gobbles up that ground ball. And there are two outs. Take time for a Mazda game break. Here's Aaron Hardigan. All right, Aaron, thank you. You know, two outs very quickly here in the third inning. Colin Calgill now for his second at bat. Calgill drew a walk and scored the last inning. And Anthony Bass throwing a lot of strikes dropping in that breaking ball. It is nothing in one. A ball and a strike. Galgill, three out of nine in this series. He scored twice. And he drives one to center field. Hit pretty well. Martin back at the track at the wall and up against the batting. He was able to pull it down. Side retired. Angels gone in order. We finished two and a half. It's the Angels six, the Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. If I could go through what he went through to be able to, you know, be the first, uh, you know, black man to play. So I'm glad he was able to do it, and I really appreciate everything he went through so I can be able to play today. Well, Jackie Robinson Day, the number 42, uh, retired from all of baseball and honored uh, in every ballpark. 
All the players, coaches, and managers around Major League Baseball wearing the number 42 in honor of the great Jackie Robinson. Carlos Corporan leading things off, and on the second pitch, he grounds out to Eric Ibar. That's how the third inning gets underway for the Rangers. A fielder, Delano the Shields. Now back to the top of the order for Texas, and Delano the Shields will face San Diego. Delano down swinging his first time to the plate. The Shields, the Rule 5 pickup by the Rangers from the Astros organization. Delino last year got as far as double A and uh, making the conversion from an infielder to an outfielder. 241 minor league stolen bases in five seasons. That's, that's a lot of base running. Down on the count here, no balls, two strikes. Now one and two. Rangers with two base runners against Hector Santiago in the first couple of innings. Got a walk with two outs to Beltre in the first. And last inning, Jake Smolinski led the inning off with a double. Advanced to third. And Rangers couldn't uh, bring him home. Still one and two. Delino, Delino's father, of course, Delino De Shields, with 13 big league seasons. He has gone on strikes here, getting that breaking ball on the back foot. And uh, second strikeout for Hector Santiago, two gone. Folks, baseball season is back, and uh, so is MLB Whip Around. Tune in every weeknight for highlights, instant analysis, and live look-ins from around the league. A new season of MLB Whip Around is here. Weeknights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Look at Odor, who swung at the first pitch that he saw from Hector Santiago. The first time up. It's pitch number one here. It's one ball, no strikes. Odor flied out to medium deep right field. One and one now. Great shot from uh, our RF camera that roams around at Globe Live Park, giving you all kinds of different viewpoints. Need to see the viewpoint, the view from our RF camera. Rangers runners scoring today. That's uh, what the Rangers need. They trail 6 0. A little bit high, and it's 2 and 2. Odor, despite the average, is down a little bit. Has reached base safely in eight of nine games, as you can see this season. By hit, a walk. Ball fouled straight down. Been hit four times. That's tied for the most in Major League Baseball. Matter of fact, the Rangers as a team have been hit more often than any team. It's pulled foul. <laughs> Skipping a rope down there. Hit for a tease and get out of the way of that thing. All the base coaches now, of course, wearing the batting helmets just to uh, protect them. Yeah. That ball gets on them pretty quick. Especially when you're watching an infielder with people on base. Little loop for the left. That's in for a base hit. Well, we'll get going the other way. That's a two-out single. He's aboard for Adrian Beltre. Yeah, when Rudnud is going well when things are going his way, this is a typical hit for him. A pitch away. He can slap it away. Also has the ability to hit the ball with some power too when you throw it more on the inside part of the plate. 
Also seen him hit a ball out of the ballpark to left center field on the pitch out yeah. of the plate. So that's right. He doesn't have just selected power. He's got pretty good power for. You, know, you call him a little guy, but he's he's short in stature, but he's solidly built. Adrian Beltre, a walk in the first inning. Beltre had his uh, five-game hitting streak snap in last night's game, and he pops this one up. First base side, uh, Navarro called off by Giovatella, and that'll do it. Rangers get a two-out single, but that's it. They strand their third runner of the day. After three, Angels leading 6-0. Robinson Day, April 15th of 2015, 68 years ago, that uh, the great Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and opened up baseball for everyone. And it was a game of inclusion, and we are including Mark McLemore in the booth, as always, here in the fourth inning. Good to see you, Matt. Good to see you guys. Good day for baseball. Beautiful day for baseball. The sun's out, beautiful weather, not too hot, not too cold, nice little breeze. We've just got to score some runs. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. It is. It seems like the two times that the Rangers have really broken loose for runs, and they were both the games that Nick Martinez pitched, but scored 10 and, and 8, and the next day it's it's almost like the offense couldn't keep it up. They just went a little bit flat and got down early, and that probably has a lot to do with the offense not performing real well. Yeah, getting down, down early is tough on a team trying to, you know, trying to come back from that. But they've just they've obviously got to be more consistent with the offense. Mm -hmm. You know, score 10 runs one day and come back the next day and not really have a whole lot, to, you know, through three innings so far. But uh, they've just got to be more consistent with it. And they, and they know it. It's just, uh, you know, it's still, you know, this this old saying, it's still early in the season. Well, it's only early for so long. That's right. Going the other way. Gia Botella into second base. So he is two for two, a single. And now a double. Giovatella drove in two runs in that six-run seventh, and he starts off the fourth by lining a, an extra base hit to right. Off, Eric Ibar. Now back to the top of the order for Eric Ibar. A nice job by Giovatella. Just what you should do with that pitch. Got some big shoes to fill, filling in this year for Howie Kendrick, but doing a nice job mm -hmm. early in the year. Didn't have a lot of playing time at the big league level the last couple of years. Only 78 at bats the last two years with Kansas City. Spent most of his time in Triple A ball. He's got a great opportunity this year with the Angels, though. Well, here's Ibar. 0 for 1. Sacrifice bunt last time up. Safety squeeze drove a run home. 
Lash that first pitch foul. Matt, today uh, honoring Jackie Robinson, uh, you were still playing when the, this began, the uh, April 15th honoring of, of the great man. And uh, boy, it, it says an awful lot for baseball to be able to honor a tradition uh, that really has made the game of baseball not only better, but open to everybody. Yeah, it, it really has. And, you know, anytime you honor someone with everyone in the league wearing their number, that obviously says an awful lot. Uh, you know, it, it's it's really tough to put into perspective what Jackie Robinson really means to baseball, and not only baseball, but you know he was just as big, you know, off the field as well. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of uh, you know his um, actions off the field get overlooked sometimes. But obviously, a huge influence on baseball and the way the game is, is today. It's a trout is a little bit high. Yeah, and it's and it's rare that you see somebody in sports able to to transcend sport and get into society as a whole. But Jackie Robinson was able to do that. He was definitely one of those people that was able to do it. There's just not very many people that that uh, that were able to get that done. But Jackie Robinson, obviously one of the best on and off the field. Right. Hard to imagine where baseball would be today had it not been for him. It's, uh, and you, you need to throw, I think, uh, Branch Rickey in there, who was the general manager of the Dodgers at the time. He was taking a big chance, too, of uh, not only was uh, Jackie Robinson the one that's putting neck on the line, but Branch Rickey, as far as a professional, was putting his neck on the line, too. Oh, there's no question about it. Uh, you know, Branch Rickey, without him having that idea, the thought, and, and the uh, foresight to say, hey, this needs to change, and I'm going to be the one to do it, regardless of what everybody else says, what society says, what baseball says, what mm -hmm. players say. This I feel this needs to be done. I have the ability to do it, so I'm going to do it. So uh, Branch Rickey absolutely deserves a ton of credit for that. Yeah, he, Branch Rickey put a lot of research into who the first black player should be. Uh -huh. And when he looked at Jackie Robinson and he studied him at UCLA and the sports he played and the way he conducted himself, he obviously made the right choice. And I'm not sure that a lot of people don't realize that he... Jackie Robinson wasn't the best player at that time. Right. He was the best player for the situation yeah, that, good point. that he was going going to be facing, but not the best athlete um, for him to choose from, uh -huh. for Branch Rickey to choose from. I kind of think he made a, a perfect choice. Well, as it turns out, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure there's any way to be a hundred percent convinced of that before you put someone in that situation and just see how they react. And Jackie Robinson, by all accounts, reacted just perfectly. Now the Angels have added a run. Mike Trout with the RBI. And here's Pujols for his third at bat. Now seven nothing, Los Angeles. You see, when everybody started wearing the number 42, you'd already retired. Hadn't you? I'd already retired. A couple years before that. And it was uh, Ken Griffey Jr. who was the first to it was his idea. do that and suggest yeah. it. Yeah, it was his suggestion to uh, Commissioner Selig at the time. And uh, Mr. Selig took it, took the ball, and ran with it. Yep. A great idea by, by Griffey. And I think, uh, I won't say long overdue. He, uh, Jackie Robinson's obviously gotten... A, a lot of notoriety, a lot of recognition as he has deserved. But I think taking it to that next step of, of everyone in baseball yeah. wearing his number and his, his number being retired in every ballpark, I think it just really says a lot. Yeah, I can't think of a more fitting honor for somebody who changed the entire landscape of, uh, of baseball to have an honor uh, that's that wide, wide reaching. A ball and two strikes to Pujols. Albert one out of two with an RBI single. You know, how about the T-Mobile game changer? Doesn't get any better than this. Jackie Roosevelt Robinson, 68 years ago today, broke the color barrier. The Dodger uh, from 47 to 56. Rookie of the year in 47. 
Pujols he got that right between his hands, I think. <laughs> At least off the top knuckle. And then pops out. Two gone. That's twice now that Pujols has been jammed. Let's go over and check in with Jim Knox, who has a special guest, Jim. Oh, I appreciate it, Buzz, with Dr. Willie Champion from East, uh, Texas College out in East Texas. And, and here's celebrating Jackie Robinson Day. Doctor, what do you remember most about Jackie? I just remember that Jackie was an uh, inspiration to all of us when he came into the baseball game, at, and, and he taught us how, how to deal with adversity. And he taught us that even in the midst of adversity, we could be where we want to be. And he was a, a hero and inspiration, and uh, everybody just looked up to Jackie Robertson. He was a powerful man for us. He taught us about love, how to love one another, even in the midst of racism and adversity. Right. Well, I appreciate the time. Thank, thank you. you Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Buzz. All right, Noxie, thank you. Very, very good observations. One ball, no strikes. The count to Matt Joyce. Now two and zero. Oh. Joyce had a big two-run double in that second inning. Angels had a couple of balls hit in spots that uh, were so close that Leonis Martin dove for them, came up very close to catching. Not quite, Elvis. Had a ball that he came close to catching, didn't quite get it done, and turns into a six-run inning. Angels have added one more here in the fourth. And ball four puts two aboard with two outs for David Freeze. No Mike Maddox out to the mound very quickly. Yeah, early in the appearance for Anthony, he was throwing a lot of strikes. They're kind of evening out now. He's thrown 16 balls and 19 strikes. Not missing by a lot. Trying to make his pitches, but just missing a little bit outside or a little bit inside with a lot of them right now. You know, I don't think there's any more difficult assignment on a pitching staff than to be, quote unquote, the long man. Where you, like Anthony, you don't know when you come to the ballpark if you're going to pitch. You get into a ball game the way he did. Uh, in relief of Derek Holland you go five innings and really have things going and then you have to wait and wait and wait with no assurance you're going to get into a ball game again any day you come to the park and now try to put it together that takes an awful lot of, of uh, understanding of what you need to do to be ready to go out and pitch at a moment's notice it's a hard job for a manager to manage as well because you hope you don't need your long man you hope the games go well and you don't ever need them sure but you're also a little bit afraid to get him work to stay sharp because if you give him a couple of innings one day and the starter gets out the next day, now you don't have him available. <laughs> so it's kind of a tightrope act for a manager knowing how to get him work yet still have him available when you need him because you never know when you're going to need him. Right. That's got to be tough for the pitcher. I mean, not knowing, okay, then, you know, you have your starter go get to that fourth, fifth inning. You know, does he shut down mentally and say, okay, they're not going to need me today because yeah. even if there's a blowout and he needs some work, he might get an inning or two in. So, it's, it, it, like you said, it's got to be tough. I know he's not out there rooting for the starter to get knocked out early sure. so he has a chance to pitch. And, you know, you go through the rotation one time, there's a good chance he hasn't pitched in five days. Yep. Check swing by Freeze. And no swing. There's uh, C.B. Buckner. Well, there was a stretch last year where it seemed like Scott Baker was pitching just like a starting yeah. pitcher. He's pitching about every five or six days, <laughs> right. four or five, six innings every time. Yeah, that's that's when things are not going well for you as a team. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Get, get your long guy on a, on a rotation, too. In fact, I noticed in the notes that in Anthony Renato's win in AAA, one, two, and nothing, the pitcher that he beat in that game was Scott Baker. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Trying to work his way back. He signed on right at the end of the uh, end of camp, I think it was, with the Dodgers. Uh -huh. Two and two is the count to freeze. Check swing and up and in the foul ball. Angels with Mike Trout out at second, Matt Joyce at first. On top, seven to nothing in the fourth inning. 
Looked like that ball hit him in the hand. At least that's what he's saying. And uh, Mike Sosha got the got the word from uh, the bench. I guess the folks upstairs taking a look at that. That being hit by a pitch or not being hit by a pitch is a challengeable play. And Sosha going to come out now and uh, explain to home plate umpire Dan Iasoni. I'm going to challenge this. Because we think the ball hit him on the hand. Who was the Ranger that got hit on the hand, challenged, and got the call? Wouldn't that happen the other day? Yeah. The, the, the replay was, was hard to talk. Mitch was it Moreland. Mitch? It was a left-handed hitter. No, I think that was in his foot. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't his foot. I wonder if second they're time, Second time in this homestand that we've seen it. I wonder if he's challenging uh, batter's interference here. Now he was no. Nope. He was when he got when he stepped out of the batter's box. He put his hand up in the air and showed it to Sosha as if to say the ball hit me in the hand. Right. He didn't. He didn't say. He didn't say much to the uh, to the umpire about it. He just kind of looked looked back and talked to him. This is the angle where you can pretty much tell that whether it hit his hand or not, and it sure looked like it hit it hit the back of his hand there. Well, in any event, uh, Dan Iasonia and uh, C.B. Buckner. With the headsets hooked up to uh, the replay command center back in New York. They will get the decision from the umpire assigned to handle challenges for this game. Ones like that are tough to tell whether it hits your hand. It can also hit the knob of the bat, too. And it can hit the knob of the bat and the edge of your the side of your hand at the same time. Tough one to see. The only one that knows exactly what happened even with the replay is freeze himself. He yeah. knows he knows where it hit and exactly what it hit. And they're not going to ask him for an opinion. You don't think so? <laughs> I don't think so. I know what his opinion is. That's why we're having the <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Tell by the length of time it's taking uh, the folks in New York to ferret this out. Uh, one more look at it. This is about as as good an angle as we're going to get. See the knob of the bat, the black part with a white label on the end of it, and uh, it looked like the hand just wrapped around that as the ball got it. Mike Sosha and Jeff Bannister watching from their prospective perches. The ruling was a foul ball. And uh, whether that will be overturned or upheld is what we're waiting for. Whatever it was, I don't think it got all of his hand because it sure didn't look like it hurt very much. And if you get a fastball in on the hand and it gets you right in the wrist and that's all it hit was your wrist, generally you can tell how much it hurts by the reaction of the hitter. And that did not appear like it did hurt. And they're going to say the uh, the call stands, I believe. I don't see how you could change it based on what we saw. Yeah. The call stands. Means there was not clear and convincing evidence to overturn it, nor was there clear and convincing evidence to uphold it. But uh, the call on the field was a foul ball, and that's exactly what is going to stand. So two balls, two strikes. David Freeze, one out of two at the plate. Laid off the good slider from Bass, and it's a full count. And now Trout and Joyce will both be off and moving with the next Anthony Bass pitch to uh, Freeze. Freeze trying to extend this inning. Chris Ionetta waits to be next. Runners on the move. Up the middle. Odor. A jump throw to first and just in time. Nice play by Rugnet Odor to prevent any further damage. Rugnet Odor, that back to jump throw, a run on two hits and two left. Three and a half gone by, 7 0 Angels.
is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by the Mazda 6. J.D. Power has awarded the Mazda 6 highest rank vehicle appeal among mid-sized cars. Seven nothing Angel lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Middle third of the order for the Rangers. And uh, Prince Fielder takes outside for ball one. Well, Prince is obviously off to an excellent start. The, the one thing that's really noticeable, other than he came into the game hitting over 400, he's had over 40 plate appearances and he's only struck out two times. So he's really making some contact. I like the fact that he's taking the ball the other way. He's using the entire field and beating that shift. Yep. Once again, <laughs> no, he, he, back up the middle. He, he hit one last night between the first baseman and the second baseman. They were about five feet apart. So he's he's definitely finding some holes. Well, like you said, Tom, when you hit the ball hard, the shift doesn't come into play nearly right, as much. Right, and he hit that last ball right by Ibar. Hit it hard. Look at that. Well, a lot of a lot of hard line drives off the bat of Prince Fielder so far. You know, and the Angels don't. Their shift isn't. Their shift isn't as drastic as most teams. Right. The shortstop is on the actually on the shortstop side of the bag, but for the Angels, most other teams that employ that shift, they have three guys on the right side. So let's check in with Emily. She has some more information for us. Yeah, I talked to Prince today about that very thing, and I asked him the question: Are you purposely trying? to beat the shift and he looked at me and kind of smiled and said sure let's go with that <laughs> and he said look I'm not trying to manipulate where the ball goes I'm trying to make good contact uh, you know trying to get a base at whatever it takes to get on base uh, to start something for this team and then I asked him what the odds were of Elvis finishing with more home runs than him Ooh. by the end of the season and uh -oh. he said very low however <laughs> at this point he does have one more than I do so I can't really talk but I have a feeling that by the end of the year, I'll be in a good, good position. <laughs> what are the chances that happens by the end of the week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's Elvis waiting in the on-deck circle. Now, you think he caught some flack about that? Oh. Well, you saw him running around the bases. He was, <laughs> had a big smile on his face. And I think he had that smile on his face because he knew what he was going to hear right. once he got back to the dugout. <laughs> well, it been almost 500 at bat since he had one. <laughs> I'm sure he heard Beltre from the dugout, so I know that helped. Smolinski hits a ball well to left center field. Trout angling over and makes the catch. And back to first goes Prince Fielder. Looks like Jake didn't quite get all that one. He is now one for two as he heads back to the bench, and Elvis coming up. And uh, speaking of Elvis, in that home run last night. Actually, not a not a terrible pitch. It's down and in, and Elvis jumped on it. And he jumps on the first pitch here. That's not going to quite get out. Navarro in foul territory for out number two. First baseman, Adam Rosales. No fielder still at first base. And Adam Rosales now will come up. Rosales fouled out to the catcher, Chris Ionetta, back in the second inning. Adam still looking for his first hit, 0 for 6 in the young season. And he takes the off-speed pitch for strike one. Mentioned Rosales finishing off a good spring. Off to a slow start, but then in his last 14 games in Arizona, he had 364. Ended up with a 292 overall average. One ball, one strike. And the Rangers have had one base runner in each inning. They have not been able to put more on than that. 
really haven't applied a lot of pressure to Hector Santiago. Of course, after he had the six-run lead to work with, he's been uh, in the strike zone a lot more consistently. Was what goes to a pitcher's mind when he gets a lead like that early in the ball game? Well, I, to me, Mac, I, you know, guys, some, there's some people that say, well, it must be tough to pitch with a big lead. I'll take a big lead any time. <laughs> I'll take my chances. But, you know, guy, some guys just aren't comfortable. They feel like they don't have to bear down on each pitch. And I, you know, I, I find that a good recipe for disaster. And what you want to do, and, and we'll talk about this as we go on, but you've got to pretend in your own mind like it's a, a very close ball game and bear down on each pitch. The Rosales gone. Rangers strand another runner. We go to the fifth inning. 7 0 Angels. Door in this fourth inning on a great play going up the middle. He's playing David Freeze. Slight pull up the middle. Ball hit right over the bag. Rui goes to his right. Knows who the runner is. Elevates. Makes a nice jumping throw going to his right. Going out toward left field. This play is a lot tougher than he makes it look. He makes it look like it's a routine play for him. But a great play. The positioning obviously to start is what got him to the ball. Took his time. Picked up his target. Made the transfer. Nice over the top throw. Great play to end that fourth inning. David Freeze yelling at him all the way up beyond the bag. <laughs> yeah, Freeze actually thought he had a hit because he, <laughs> he saw he had a little bit of round. He thought, you know, thought the ball was going to get through. But lo and behold, there's a, a guy with a glove on the other yeah. end. You know, Rugnet Odor, we've seen him on this homestand a couple of throws like that. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit closer than the other one, but uh, he can cover some ground. He, extremely strong arm. To make that uh, make that play behind second base and jump it. Yeah, you know, people talk about you know how a guy has range here, shortstop, third baseman, or whatever. In my mind, range is all about your arm. There are a lot of guys that might be able to get to that ball, but don't have enough arm strength to be able uh -huh. to throw it over the top and get it over the first base, even with an average or below average runner running. And so for me, it's all about arm. For obviously, you've got to have your first couple of quick steps, but. You can get to the ball. You've got to be able to finish that play off in, a, in order for it to be a highlight play. Now, for a guy that may not have that kind of arm strength, would he, would he tend to shade a hitter a little bit more to protect that lack of arm strength? I think you shade him a little bit more, and then you also come in a little bit. Uh -huh. A lot of people also think that the further back you are, the more range you have. But if you have the, those first two steps are, are very quick, if you've got quick feet, you can you can come in some, and that actually cuts off that cuts off that angle and gives you a little bit more range. Mm -hmm. I like coming in. I had a, you know my first couple steps were pretty quick, but I still like playing in and just take that away. My arm was you know was pretty good, so I didn't have to worry about you know shading this way or shading that way. So I, I just like being in. I like having that right. getting those first couple of steps really quick. 
I can remember being in Minnesota one day a long time ago playing the Twins when Gene Mock was the Twins manager. Nice pitch for strike three. Roy Smalley was their shortstop. And Roy Smalley was Gene Mock's nephew. And Gene Mock had two long pieces of rope, both starting at home plate into the ground and then making an angle, one toward second base and one toward third base. And he was trying to show Roy Smalley, it seemed like, that the closer you play, the less you have to go to your left or right to make the same play. In other words, if you're out on the grass where those strings, the distance between those strings was much greater than it was mm -hmm. as you came closer to home plate. I guess the trade-off is the closer you come to home plate, the quicker the ball gets to you, too. But it, it seemed like he was trying to show him you don't have to play on the outfield grass. You can play a couple of steps in, and then you won't have to go quite as far to your left or your right. And then what you're saying, Mac, is once you catch the ball, then you don't have to throw it as far either. No, you don't. And I was never a guy that really liked playing on the edge of the grass. And then, two, you really, what people don't think about or take into account is every infield is cut differently. So the edge of the grass in one place may be different than another place. Didn't think of that. Boston was... Oh, my God, Boston's still terrible with that. <laughs> and so I used to, you know, early in my career, I, I would walk off and actually the first time into every town because some years uh, an opposing team may change their infield grass. Yeah. So I would walk off from the cut of the infield grass to the back of the infield, and that would tell me where I needed to play. Because Boston's second base, it was, a, it was the furthest one. I, for some reason, it was 7 to 10 feet deeper to, the air, to their edge of the grass, and then they had a two foot drop as soon as you got onto the grass <laughs> really yeah and it's probably still there and so you really had to know each and every field and you know if you take a look at the cuts at first and third base and even second base but really first and third base when you know, a runner's taking his lead every cut is different so you have to count your steps as opposed right. to looking at the different cuts in the different ballparks so a lot of those little nuances are you know guys have to be aware of it I think that's what makes you better once you figure out uh, each field. Did you ever play in a shift where you were 10 or 20 feet out into right field? Yes. At second base? Absolutely. Does that feel funny when you do that? It was it was extremely strange, and I, I did it my rookie year, as a matter of fact, uh, against uh, Ken Herbert. Uh-huh. Uh, and doing it on turf in, in Minnesota, that wasn't very comfortable for me because coming up through the minor leagues, I'd only played on one artificial surface. So I wasn't really comfortable in the first time we went into Minnesota. Jay Mock, who was my manager, uh, get out there, keep going back. And I'm like, and I'm look, turning around, and, you know, I see my right fielder right there, and I'm like, well, wh what am I doing here? And then, lo and behold, Ken Herbeck hit one at me, and I figured it out because it, it still hurt way out there. So I get it now. And tomorrow grounds out two away. And Colin Cowgill coming up. Calgill, 0 for 1. Fly ball, last time up. Walked and scored in the second inning. Bass with a knee high strike. Yeah, Gene Mock, you talk to anybody that, uh, that's been around the game, and almost every infield theory of, of playing infield in one form or another has come from Gene Mock. He's, uh, his, his thoughts on that is uh, philosophy of playing the infield is really something. He's known as the genius. He's also a stickler for uh, fundamentals, wasn't he? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we, uh, as I was coming through the minor leagues and became a prospect and, and you know, they figured out, okay, well, we're going to give this guy a shot at the big leagues. Uh, myself, Devon White, we played together pretty much all the way through the minor leagues. We had to come out when we were in AAA. We had to come out every day and bump. <laughs> uh, that side retired in very quick fashion. A couple of strikeouts for Anthony Bass. We're halfway through the ball game. Angel seven, Rangers nothing.
Premium. It's the number one live streaming sports service. is celebrating 13 years. You can watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Leonis Martin, first ball swinging, lines it to Mike Trout in center field. One out. Time for a monster game break. Here's Aaron Hardigan. Thank you, Aaron. Carlos Corporan, the number nine hitter in the Ranger order of things, takes strike one from Hector Santiago. Angels leading here seven to nothing. Corporan, a ground ball to short his first time. Now nothing and two. The Rangers have uh, three hits and a walk today against Santiago. They have not had more than that one base runner per inning. And to Santiago in this ballpark, 2-0 last year and 3-0 lifetime. He has not been intimidated by the uh, cozy confines at times in this ballpark. He's allowed exactly one run in three of his four career starts here. The one-two pitch. Corporan three hits and 13 at bats so far. One double. And he has driven in a run this season. Near the right field, hit pretty well. Going back is Cowdell. He's at the track. Goodbye. <laughs> Carlos Corcoran is first home run as a Ranger, and Texas is on the board, seven to one. Well, showing some pretty nice power going the other way, reaching out for a pitch away and driving it out of the ballpark to right field. Jeff Bannister was saying the other day, as a switch hitter, historically he's been a better hitter left-handed than right-handed, although this year he's looked very good swinging the bat right-handed. There's a good example of it right there. Well, team home run number seven, number one for Carlos Corporan. Delano to Shields, who has struck out both times this afternoon. One ball, one strike. It popped up. Shallow center field. And the second baseman, Gio Botella. Handles that for out number two. Delano makes that right-hand turn at first base and goes back to the dugout 0 for 3. Now Rugden Odor. Tom told you Santiago last year, six and nine with the Angels, although he uh, was very good after spending a little bit of time at AAA. Came up in his last uh, 15 starts or so. And six and three. ERA right around three. Rocket down to Navarro. He picks it clean. Faces Odor to the bag and wins. The Rangers get a run on one hit. We finish five and seven to one. Angels. Mac, thanks for joining us. We'll look for you after the ball game on Rangers Live. Hey, all right.
also homeschool day here at the ballpark. This is Camille, close to 500 on hand. What did you guys do before the game? Well, we enjoyed a parade around the entire field. All the kids got out there, got to take pictures, just step on the field for the first time. It was great. There we go. What's the best thing about being homeschooled? Homeschool? This is field trip day for us. This is an awesome way to spend some time with the family. All right, very good. Well, you enjoy the rest of the game. Good to have you out here. Appreciate it, Buzz. All right, Doxy, thank you. Top of the sixth inning, Angels on top by six. Johnny Giovatella, who's had a two-for-two two day thus far with a couple of runs driven home and a couple of runs scored. Take strike one. Angels seven runs on eight hits. Rangers one run on four hits. And Giovatella with the foul ball back. Runs the count to no balls and two strikes. Anthony Bass in his fourth full inning of work. And this afternoon took over in the second with two outs. Wow, just the one run on two hits. Check swing. Here we go. There will be no appeal. Almost got Gio Vitella. One and two. Giovatella in his first go around with the Angels. Spent most of the last four years with the Kansas City Royals and uh, 125 games at the big league level over those four years. Call strike three. Good pitch. Last got the inside corner, got the call for his fourth strikeout. Struck out three out of the last four hitters. You know, depending on how far Anthony goes in this ball game, that's just about a perfectly located pitch. He could end up having the second or third most innings pitched early in the season yeah. of any Ranger pitcher. Kobe that's Lewis right. and Nick Martinez have 13 and a third and 14 innings respectively. Anthony came into the game with seven innings pitched and He's working on four innings right now. And that little one's working on lunch. I wonder if there's any bacon in that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> bacon and carrot baby food. <laughs> Eric Ibar swinging through that bass offering. It's one ball, one strike. Ibar 0 for 2. The sacrifice bunt driving home a run. Not two and one. Pass at the 70 pitch mark. 41 strikes, 29 balls this afternoon. And he misses low to run the count to three and one. Back to the plate. And ball four is high. That's the second walk allowed by Bass. And it will bring up Mike Trout. And with that walk, we'll get a little stirring out of the Ranger bullpen. Great shot from uh, high overhead up in the third deck. First base side, Carlos Corporan going to go out and Take a little time talking to Anthony Bass, allow the bullpen to begin its work. Logan Verrett up and loosening. Anthony Bass in that five inning outing against Houston in the home opener last Friday. Who 70 or 63 pitches? So he has gone over that. Working on uh, number 73 coming up. Mike Trout, two for two with a walk, an RBI, and a run scored. Nothing in one.
season average at 433. Last year's unanimous MVP in the American League. Another foul off to the right. Our creative uh, production crew, Kurt Dyker, Dave Burchett, and company, I want you to know that's the uh, fishiest thing you'll ever see. <laughs> As Dave Burchett just said, my ear, it's a seafood sampler, bass and trout. <laughs> that's pretty good. It I is like good. That. It is good. We take <laughs> a group of people with a creative minds of our compadres down in the truck to yep. come up with that. It would. I mean, we've watched this bass pissing, pitching to Trout. We never knew the difference. And Trout laces one up the middle. He is three for three, stopping at second. Ibar. Two on, one out for Albert Pujols. That is going to be it. Maybe. Mike Maddox on his way out to the mound. Looked like when I looked up at first, it would look like uh, Jeff Bannister. And with 76 pitches under his belt, Anthony Bass uh, putting in more work today than he did on Friday. But Mike out there just to get a reading on uh, how Anthony's feeling and say, okay, time for the double play. Mike Maddox went out to, in last night's ball game and got that double play as ordered from Nick Martinez. So maybe he'll work that same magic with Anthony Bass. Albert Pujol stepping in. Pujols one for three with an RBI single today. High bar the lead from second. One ball, no strikes. Pools, part of that uh, six-run second inning for the Angels. Into the hole, Beltre has it go up and over his glove. Around third comes Ibar. He will score. The Shields can't play the hop, so everybody else advances 90 feet. Trout to third. Pujols to second. And the Angels lead it 8-1. to one. The Angels are finding some holes today. They've had several ground balls that have just eluded fielders. They've had fly balls that have fallen in for extra base hits bloopers that have fallen in for base hits and mixed in a couple of balls hit hard as well the second and third still just one out a run across that's going to do it for Anthony Bass Bannister out to take the ball from him and summon Logan Verrett coming in from the Ranger bullpen we'll tell you about Logan when we come back after this timeout on Fox Sports Southwest
Well, Anthony Bass uh, finished after three and two thirds. A good day, though, in relief for Anthony Bass. Yeah, he makes he made some good pitches. He had good movement on his fastball. Had some good threw some great, great breaking balls. Great pitch right there as it tailed in on the fist. Well located fastball. Batter didn't like it, but it was a good pitch. Angels had some hits against him and scored a couple of runs, but haven't hit the ball all that hard against him. They've had some balls falling in, ground balls finding holes. The bass gives way to the 24-year-old right-hander Logan Verrett. Verrett a claim by, off waivers by the Rangers. A rule five he becomes a rule five proposition, uh, getting him from Baltimore. He would made him a rule five pick from the Mets in the offseason. Ranger infield all the way in. The first pitch to Matt Joyce is ball one. Numbers for Verrett. This is third time out. He's worked multiple innings each of his first two outings. 316 opponent batting average. And he misses off the outside corner. Two balls, no strikes. Joyce this afternoon, a two run double in the second. One for two officially. The intentional walk now that they fell behind Matt Joyce. That'll load the bases up for David Freeze. Fourth wide one is issued. Now David Freeze. Folks, you can head to Globe Live Park on Sunday, May 3rd, and enjoy a post-game concert from Casting Crowns. That's presented by Buckner International. Concert will follow the 205 game against the A's, and you can get your game tickets and field pass to watch the concert from the field at TexasRangers.com slash concerts. The base is full now. Threes is one for three today. Fouls off that first Barrett offering. Nothing in one. Threes a single and a run scored in the second. Other than that, he has struck out and grounded out. Trout, Pujols, and Joyce, third, second, and first. A good tailing fastball from Logan Barrett. Barrett, a uh, college teammate of his Ranger teammate, Sean Tolleson, down at Baylor. Logan grew up in, uh, in South Texas, down in the Corpus Christi area. 0-2. Oh, well, Ranger pitchers in this series have really attempted to pitch the Angel hitters in. Every one of them that's come in. Nick Martinez, the last five innings of his outing last night, probably has had the most success. It's fouled off. Yeah, it's been no secret what they've been trying to do, especially the right-handed hitters. Mm -hmm. And they made quality pitches. Uh, not much that guys can do. Uh, the base hit that Freeze got was on a, a jam shot. Breaking ball just off the outside corner. Two and two. Logan Verena, third round pick by the New York Mets out of Baylor in the 2011 draft. Into the hole, off the glove of Elvis Andrews into left field. One runs home. Pujols coming home. He will score. That makes it a 10 to 1 Angel lead. It's just really one of those games. It's uncanny how many balls are just eluding the fielders by a little bit. That's the second one Elvis has not quite been able to come up with. There's been two to center field that Martin hasn't quite been able to get to. There's been a couple of down down the third baseline that have gone by Adrian won a line shot off his glove won a bad hot bouncer over his glove. Just one of those days. Not to say the Angels haven't swung the bats a little bit to go along with it but there's also been some good fortune in yep. finding holes. Yeah. Sure have.
Well, those two runs, uh, again, on the ledger of Anthony Bass. And that will close the book on Anthony. Four runs charged to him. They were all earned. Chris Iannetta. A double in three trips. Down on the count now. And no balls and two strikes. Angels with 10 runs on 11 hits. Rangers one run on four hits. Barrett back to the plate. And a nice short hop pickup by Carlos Corporan. Logan Verrett at Las Vegas last year in the uh, Mets system when he 11 and 5 with a 4.33 ERA. A little check swing roller to first. Flip by Rosales to Verrett. That's out number two. On to third goes Joyce. To second is Freeze, and it brings up Efren Navarro. First baseman Efren Navarro. Verrett made 28 starts last year in Las Vegas and uh, that tied for the PCL lead. Worked 162 innings. He has been a starter throughout his minor league career. Now working out of the uh, the bullpen is kind of a long man. Multiple inning reliever for the Rangers. Efren Navarro 0 for 3 today. Off the end of the bat and Nicely played by Odor. Tough hop, and he throws out after Navarro. Three runs on three hits and two left for the Angels. Bottom of the six coming up. Angels 10, Rangers 1. Sonic Slam Inning brought to you by Sonic. Today's jackpot is worth $100 and dinner for two at Sonic Driving. Today, the Rangers are hitting for Rhonda Garn from Wills Point. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam during the inning, Rhonda Garn from Wills Point will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. And the big guys are up. Adrian Beltre, Prince Fielder, and Jake Smolinski. High pop foul off the bat of Beltre will find his way back about five rows. Move the count to a ball and a strike. Adrian 0 for 1. A walk in the first and popped out in the third. 
back to Santiago. 75 pitches thus far through five complete. Much more efficient today than he was his first time out. It took him almost 100 pitches to get through five and a third. Well, the, rain, the Angels today are turning around to a certain degree, a little bit of a trend the last week. They're starting pitchers at an 814 ERA over the last five outings. And today, Santiago's pitching a pretty nice ball game through five innings. The bullpen has been pitching very well. Shouldn't say turning around a trend there. Their bullpen since July of last year has ranked first in the major leagues in a lot of categories. ERA 290. Don't give up many home runs. A few different faces out there than they've had, had last year. But they need their starters to get it going. And I guess by all accounts, they're about ready to get Garrett Richards back. And that's good today. Pretty good remedy for your yeah. rotation to get him back. Richards uh, rehabbing from that left knee surgery that he had last year, last August. He came back in uh, in fairly short order, apparently. 2 2 pitch. Delta gets jammed. A little pop up. Freeze coming down the line and in foul territory. One gone. The other thing that they're doing today, they're scoring some runs today, obviously. They have 10 runs. They've been held to three runs or less in six of their last eight games. So they have not been swinging the bats, scoring a lot of runs. They're scoring a lot of runs tonight, to this afternoon. And their starting pitching has been struggling a little bit. I mentioned a couple of times in this series that it appears they miss Howie Kendrick and in, in sometimes in the middle of the lineup. He's hitting a lot of different places. He's hit second, he's hit sixth, he's hit fifth, right around in there. But he's always been a good Good dependable hitter for the Angels. They don't have him now. They've missed him. Prince Fielder singled his last time up. He's one for two. Fielder now with that average at 410. Prince has had three straight multi hit games, mm -hmm. trying to make it four. To right field. Oh. A bullet and a run down by Colin Cowgill. Got out in front of that off-speed pitch, you know, because he's probably had at least three balls this year like that. Yeah. He doesn't have a home run, but he just hasn't had the trajectory. All he has to do is get this ball up in the air a little bit, and it's been no problem. Man. Get out there in a hurry. And Prince is getting his hits, and what the Rangers need is the rest of the lineup to start doing the same thing. Jake Smolinski had his first hit of the year, a double back in the second inning. There's Prince and Jonas Martin, Logan Barrett. Rangers right now in the lineup today have four regular players hitting under 200. You know that's going to change, but nevertheless, a week through a week of the season, it's been one of the problems scoring runs. Odor, Beltre, Andrus, Martin, all hitting below 200. Off the outside corner, three balls and no strikes. Smolinski. Well, the club came in today, hitting just 213, and that's that's not going to get you a whole lot. Yeah, unless everybody on the team's hitting 213, it stands to reason going to be a few guys <laughs> below 200. <laughs> and ball four. Smolinski draws the two-out walk. Yeah, the uh, boy this year too, the offense is down off the baseball. The league average. In the American League through the first, well, nine nine days now, ten days now, it was 243, and that's uh, you know maybe about 15, 20 points below where you would expect it. Sometimes the weather is just terrible at the beginning of the year, and that can affect it. But in the Rangers' case, that hasn't been a problem. Elvis fly ball to right and a foul pop to first. Oh, for two, hitting 175. And Santiago all of a sudden losing uh, control in the strike zone. When you go back a couple of years to 2013, he walked 72 batters in 149 innings. Last year, he walked 53 in 127 innings. You know, they're not 
incredibly high totals, but they're higher than he would like them to be. What would you say is solid average walks per nine innings? Would you say three if is you, solid if you average? If you get down below three, it's yeah, You're right doing around okay. three, I think, is pretty, pretty average. And anything four or over, yeah, that's, that's high. That's trouble. Yeah. That'll do it for the Rangers. They strand a runner on the walk. We have finished six. The Angels leading 10 to 1 on Fox Sports. As they uh, come to bat in the top of the seventh inning. A couple of uh, changes for the Rangers. We'll catch you up on those. As uh, Logan Verrett is uh, finishing his warm up tosses. He's got a new first baseman. Mitch Moreland has uh, come into the ball game to take over at first. And uh, Adam Rosales moves from. Uh, First base across the diamond to take over a third. So Adrian Beltre finished for the afternoon. Morgan will hit in Beltre's spot. Colin Calgill starting things off here in the seventh and takes ball one from Verrett. Calgill 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Popped it straight up, and uh, Carlos Corporan had no idea where it was. He took the mask off and looked up and looked at the sun. I thought he was going to have a play on it when I saw it go up, and then the way he looked up, I figured it was about 40 rows back. <laughs> then I realized what you just said. I don't think he knew where it was. Obviously, he wasn't going to catch it, but it wasn't that far back. You know, you've got the equipment on. You, you know it's gone up in the air, but you look up if you can't see it. You have no idea where it is. And Galgill rams one up the alley in left center field. It's going to the wall. Galgill to second. He'll put the brakes on there. And that was a vicious line drive by Galgill, who has his first hit of the afternoon. He'll lead off double in the seventh. A hanging slider. Center square. He struck that solidly on a line. Had to hit it pretty hard to get it by the shield. Yeah. And rolled all the way to the wall. Well, an even dozen hits now for the Angels. Johnny Giovatella, who has two of those 12 hits, takes strike one. Giovatella, as you can see, a single, a double. He has scored twice. He is knocked in two. Three RBI for the season. Well, the Angels second baseman. And he takes just off the outer edge. He 
you talk, we're talking about offense being down at the start of the season. There's a couple of teams that that's not the case, and it's kind of fun to look through the statistics early in the season. They don't mean a whole lot. Easy play for Adam. You look at the, the top ten in hitting. The Tigers have the top two and the tenth, so they have three out of the top ten. Kansas City has three right in the middle. Leading hitter in the league is Iglesias, the shortstop, known for his defense with the Tigers. And for Kansas City, Perez, Morales, and Kane all hitting over 400. And both of, both of those teams have gotten off to great starts. Yeah. I think Kansas City's still undefeated, aren't they? I believe so, Tom. Unless they lost last night. The Tigers lost their first game the other day, so the way the first week of the season's going, that shapes up to be a pretty good race. Kansas City are seven, seven and seven and oh. Tigers are seven and one. Eric Ibar up for his fourth plate appearance this afternoon. He is 0 for 2 officially with a walk and a sacrifice bunt. Tigers have made that they've lost Max Scherzer, but they made some pretty good acquisitions. Shane Green, who they got in that three way trade with the Yankees, has already won two games, pitched eight innings twice, hadn't given up a run yet. J.D. Martinez, I, they got him off waivers, I think. Didn't they from Houston? Right, I think yeah. they got him off waivers from yeah. Houston. He's got four home runs this year, knocked in nine runs. Had a big year for him last year. Iglesias, the shortstop, missed most of the season out here. They last year, they've gone from a team that was suspect defensively to the point where you wondered if they could win with that kind of defense. Now they've signed Ghost to play in the outfield. Iglesias is back at shortstop. Kinsler's playing great defensively at second. Now they're being talked about as a team that defense could help them win this year. They made a pretty nice turnaround. And Castellanos has done a reasonably good job. Third, yeah, third. yes. Uh -huh. Two and two, the count to Ibar. Reaches out, pokes one to left, and slicing, and just foul over the. Take a look, Delano De Shields. He couldn't get there in time, unfortunately. Ball bounding uh, about a foot or two foul. Flybar coming back to home plate. Corporan getting a series of signs to Logan Barrett. Cal Gillett second getting his lead and peering in. Now uh, time called momentarily. This one playable in right center. Thomas Martin. Right there, that is out number two. Mike Trout coming up. Sure, At a moment here, I'd like to remind you on Friday, May 1st, Rangers take on the Oakland A's in the first of a three game series. Fans will be treated to a post game fireworks show set to music from the Back to the Future movies. That's presented by Big Green Egg. Join us as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future. Get $14 upper reserve tickets using the online coupon code fireworks. At TexasRangers.com slash specials. Mike Trout, a perfect afternoon. A walk and three singles. He has driven in a run. He has scored two. And he takes a Barrett pitch in for strike one. Trout now hitting 452. Pitch from Barrett. Nothing into the cap. Now Logan ready, the 0 2. And that is just down and away. Well, the Rangers will enjoy an off day tomorrow and head on to Seattle to begin a an eight game, 10 day road trip. Three in Seattle, two in Arizona. 
and three in Anaheim. Have a couple of off days mixed in there, along with tomorrow. The Rangers' first off day this year after uh, playing ten straight days to open up the season. Yeah, it's unusual to have no off days the first ten days, and then four in the next fifteen days. Well, this gets rid of it quickly, and Trout out by a couple of steps. Lead off double, no damage to for the Angels, but they still lead after six and a half, ten to one. Los Angeles. Our board game summary, and it's been all Angels this afternoon. Anthony Renato didn't get any breaks and uh, made some bad luck of his own. And give it up the double and then the squeeze play. Then a ball just under Elvis's glove. Lost a couple of more runs. And that double drove Anthony from the ball game. So Renato only able to work an inning and two thirds charge with six earned runs. Goal this afternoon in his first start in a Ranger uniform. Adam Rosales beginning things here in the Rangers seventh. Rosales, 0 for 2. He has popped out and struck out. After Santiago has limited the Rangers to a run on four hits, and he gets strikeout number three. Make that four. Second time he's gotten Rosales. One gone for Leonis Martin. Leonis 0 for 2. Looks at strike one. Santiago working quickly and misses with the breaking ball. Leonis had a good game last night. He scored a couple of runs, walked, had a hit. Doesn't have much to show for today. He's been up twice, but he's hit the ball hard twice to center field. Once a long fly ball to right center field. The last time up a line drive mm -hmm. to Mike Trout on, out in center field. So the last couple of days have, he's looked better than he did early in the season as a leadoff hitter. So maybe Buzz, as you said earlier, he's feeling a little more comfortable. Not as much pressure down at the bottom of the order. Maybe that will allow him to start swinging the bat. And I'll also allow him to move back up in the batting order. Now he has gone on strikes, and Dan Iasoni, the home plate umpire, didn't really care for uh, Leonis's reaction and told him so as he left. No, two gone. Marlos Corporan coming up. Well, folks, registration is now open for the 10th annual Bark of the Park event. And it's sponsored by Avaderm Natural Pet Foods and Nyla Bone and Adams. Bring your dog to the park on Saturday, May 2nd for the pregame parade 
and then watch the Rangers take on the A's with your puck. Visit TexasRangers.com slash bark at the park and register your dog today. Carlos Corporan fouling the next pitch back. And it's a count of one ball and one strike. Carlos accounting for the only run this afternoon against uh, Hector Santiago. Well, he's went, he's he's hit a home run to right field. And he was trying to go deep that time to left field. <laughs> what a big swing. Two eighty six average for Corporan. It's pop foul that will reach the seats. We're going to take a look after Navarro. But it's back ten rows or so. Well, we'll um, pick up the idea. I'll, I'll ask you about it now, Tom. I mean, you can think about it during the uh, during the break. And right. you're, the, you're the skipper now. You you did the lineup shuffling yesterday. Got the spark you were looking for. Shuffled it a little bit more today. Didn't quite get what you were asking for or what you were looking for. Now, what do you do when you go on the road? Uh, going to Seattle and you've got a left-hander and Jay Happ working on Friday night. Uh, do you try to get back to a set lineup or do you hope that you can juggle it even further and, and get some production? Yeah, and you know, that's, that's a tough question. I think you first thing I would I would do is I would go along with what the skipper said when he said that Leonis is his leadoff hitter and he just wants to shake things up to try to get a spark. And uh, I guess finish that next inning. Sure. Does. All right. Yeah, it turns out to be a one, two, three inning. That is the first one that Hector Santiago has had this afternoon. We'll go to the eighth inning in Arlington. The Angels leading 10 to 1. Pony Pride in a Texas Rangers game. Get discounted tickets for the Monday, April 27th game against the Mariners. The first 1,000 fans with an SMU ticket at the park get a free Rangers cap in SMU blue, red, and white colors. Just go to TexasRangers.com slash SMU for details. Mallard well, Pujols will lead off the... Uh, Top of the eighth inning. Angels on top, 10 to 1. Pools, a couple of hits in four trips today. He has scored twice, driven in a run. Angels up and down their lineup have done some damage in almost every position. And for Navarro, the only angel that does not reach base this afternoon. The buzz you're talk, talking about the lineup and, yeah. and the best way to go about that. You know, it, it makes it difficult when you look at your lineup and you've got 
several of your regulars hitting below 200. It's going to be it's tough to put any lineup together and have it click last night it definitely clicked for sure. But in order for the lineup to click you have to have a lot of guys one through nine swinging the bats and getting on base and driving and driving in runs. And there's times where everyone's doing that and you, as a manager you say you know it really doesn't matter where I bat these guys because everyone's hitting the ball and we're going to score runs and right. right now until guys start swinging the bats which you hope will happen soon you look at it and you say I don't know where to put these guys because to have the best lineup sure because no one's swinging the bats right now. So as to what he will do tomorrow I'm not sure you know maybe he'll go back to the opening day lineup and say I've, I've shaken it up. We had success one day not so much the next day. I believed in the lineup on opening day. Uh, maybe if you go on the road now and you give it a try again so I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe having an off day too. It'll kind of settle things down a little bit. You can get a fresh, a fresh start, more or less. Uh huh. You know, I'm not going to make too big a thing about having a, an off day, but uh, it has been a tough ten days. A, a tough from the standpoint of having to travel to the West Coast, come back here, and have a home opener, and uh, you know, get a lot of things done in a short amount of time without that off day. Pujols is out in a little number. Well, Matt Joy's coming to play, and we're going to go check in with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, Buzz, real quick time for the progressive fan of the game. On tax day, April 15th, we have an IRS agent here named Brooke. Now, we could give it to you, but we also have a 93-year-old lady over here. What do you think? I would love for the 93-year-old lady. Okay, good. So that you're not going to hold it against me, are you? Okay, well, good. It's SC, 93 years young, big-time Ranger fan, loves Buzz and Tom, of course. Yeah, it's wet. I know. I dropped it on the way. I'm sorry. Okay, okay I know. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yes, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I like the Rangers, and I, uh, I wish they'd win once in a while. Okay, well, so do we. We appreciate that, Esty, and congratulations. We'll try the shirt in the sun. Thank you. I hate you. the wet T-shirt you just gave me. <laughs> Yeah, here's a problem, Jimmy. You've got an IRS agent down there. That shirt's worth 20 bucks. She better declare that on her income tax. That's right. Can we write this off? Absolutely. Why okay, not? good. Why not? That's good. Yeah, Very since good. it's wet, you can write it off. <laughs> it's damaged goods. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Matt Joyce poked a single to right field. He is aboard with one out. And David Freeze coming up. Freeze two for four today with a couple of runs driven in. He has scored a run. And Barrett working inside off the plate for ball one. Now, Buzz, you were, ta you were talking about the schedule and how the Rangers play the first ten days of the season without an off day. It, it seems like obviously late in the season when you played a lot of baseball and the sun's out and it's hot you want an off day but also at the beginning of the year the pitchers haven't been stretched out and for that matter the regulars haven't been playing nine innings that often seems like you'd maybe mix in at least one off day in the first ten days and take one of the four away that you're going to have in the last 15 days four days and fifth, four days off in 15 days is really too much too many. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent right right now. We got time for a Boston game break. Here's Aaron Hardigan. All right, Aaron, thank you. Well, here are the uh, Angels really putting it on the Rangers this afternoon 10 to 1. And a big rip and a miss by Ionetta. This Ionetta, a double and a run scored in four trips. Angels with a, a baker's dozen worth of hits this afternoon to put up their 10 runs. Logan Brett bouncing off the mound and makes a nice play. Low throw, but taken care of by Mitch Borland. No runs a hit, one left. Rangers will come to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, trailing the Angels 10 to 1 on Fox Sports Southwest.
ticket package available for you. You can build your perfect plan by selecting the 20 games that work best for your schedule. And you also save more than 20% on gate prices. You enjoy the concession discount and a whole bunch of more exclusive benefits. Visit TexasRangers.com slash 20 game plans to build your plan today. Some changes for the Angels as the Rangers come to bat. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning, trailing 10-1. New pitcher on the hill just recalled from AAA, Adam Wilk, 27-year-old left-hander, takes over. Wilk replaced uh, Drew Rusinski, last night's starter, who was optioned to AAA. Wilk uh, recalled from Salt Lake City. This is his Angels debut in his first big league game since back in 2012. He was with Detroit. And not to wear out the schedule buzz, but when you look beyond April and you look at May, after the Rangers have four off days in the last two weeks of April, they go to May. They play 17 straight days, have an off day, and then play 13 straight days. They play 30 out of 31 days in May. One off day after having four in two weeks. Then you look at the all, around the All Star break. They have four days off for the All Star break. They have two off days the week before and one day one day after it. So seven off days in two weeks <laughs> around the All Star break. So they they're going to have a lot of rest a couple of times and no rest for extended period, yeah. periods of time. And I know it's difficult to put a schedule together with interleague play every day and all the teams. But I'm not so sure the off days are spread very well for the Rangers. Yeah, yeah you're right. The Ranger fans enjoying the uh, sunny afternoon uh, despite the 10 to 1 uh, Angels lead. And we understand Emily Jones wants to chip in him. Yeah, I have a question for you guys as former players. Did you, when the schedule came out, did you look at it in that way, or is that more of something that your family looks at to try to plan <laughs> things? Do you look at it that way? I'm curious, because I, I look at it, you know, obviously for obvious reasons, but I wonder about you guys. Now, when, I, when, I, when I got the schedule, I looked at where, when we were going to play in Boston, because that was home for me. But other than that, I was so happy to be in the big leagues, I never <laughs> even worried about how many off days we had or, or when they were. I didn't look at stuff like that. I guess the older you get, the harder the travel is. I'm not only talking about the players having no rest for the month of May, I'm looking at us, too, for some, <laughs> for some of those trips. It's just nice to have them spread out a little bit better. But to answer your question, and I never looked at it personally. I'd, I'd just like to know when I was going to be in Boston. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I, not Boston for me, but uh, Southern California. And it was uh, it was more for my family when mm -hmm. they could make trips uh, when we were going to play out there. So, it, I, you know, I was going to show up at the ballpark no matter what, usually. Mitch Moreland with his first at bat of the afternoon. He promptly bangs one to right field. And a diving attempt by Calvio, but he comes up a little bit short, has to trap it. Moreland has a base hit. And the Rangers, for the first time this afternoon, have two runners aboard in the same inning. And Prince Fielder coming up. Nice play in right field by Calgill. He had to swat at the ball to keep it from going all the way to the wall and probably a double or a triple. He's going to dive and try to catch it, and then he did the next best thing, which was try to block it to make it to get make it so it didn't get by him. Fielder takes the pitch outside. Prince, a base hit in three trips. Although well, last time up, he hit a line drive that. Took about a half a second to get out to right fielder Colin Calgill for the out. Up there now with uh, Odor at second and Moreland at first. One away. Odor, by the way, hit by the pitch to get aboard. That's the fifth time that Rugnet Odor has been hit, and the Rangers are playing their 10th game today. Wow. I have to start watching to see if there's anything that he does at the plate that makes him a target. Doesn't look like he's exceptionally close to the plate, but 
Maybe gets he is. I gets know. in the way of a lot of pitches. He sure does. So far. You know, maybe some of it is they're trying to throw him in and pitches are just getting away from him. But in that situation, you, you know there's no way that Adam Wilkes coming into a ball game and throwing at him. <laughs> you wouldn't think so, would you? But at the same time, the pitch is about a two feet inside when it hit him. It makes you wonder. Two and one, the count to Prince Fielder. Wilk misses down and away. It's three and one. The Rangers trying to make some eighth inning noise here. They have two on with one out, a three one count to field. Jake Spolinski, the number five hitter, will follow Prince to home plate. Adam Wilk, a Southern California native, playing for his hometown team. The lower part of the strike zone to fill the count. Look, another one of those angels that went to uh, Long Beach State University. Prince Fielder expressing his displeasure after uh, Anaya Sonia called that a strike. Now Wilk readies for the payoff pitch. Is just a little bit low for ball four and fielder. <laughs> Pretty emphatic about uh, turning around to look at Iasoni to see what the call was going to be. Well, that loads the bases up for Smolinski. Well, one, one before it. Barely touched the strike zone. Didn't look like that one did. Ionetta caught the ball and raised it up, which usually is a dead giveaway. But the catcher didn't think it was a strike anyway. Get your coach Mike Butcher out there to uh, have a little chat with Adam Wilk and uh, Chris Ionetta. Wilk signed with the Angels as a minor league free agent this past offseason. Made his major league debut as we mentioned in Detroit 2011. Last worked for the Tigers in 2012. Well, here's Smolinski who has doubled and walked in three trips. One ball no strikes. Base is full of Ranger teammates, Odor, Moreland, and Fielder. One ball, one strike to Jake Smolinski. So remember last year, came up and got off to a great start with the Rangers. And a foul ball off of his foot in Yankee Stadium and suffered a fracture of his foot. And that really put a grip in his style for about six weeks. Went back to the active roster and uh, finished off the year very, very nicely. One and two. Wilk misses low and away with the off-speed pitch. Wilk at 6'2", about 180 pounds. Okay's the sign from Ionetta. And again, pop foul off to the right. Back in the box. Wilkes set. Another 2-2 pitch. 
Didn't want to go around the pitch up, and he couldn't stop himself. Malinsky down on strikes. There are two away. Elvis Andrews coming up. Back up slider. Stayed up and away and never broke. Mm -hmm. As a hitter, if you pick the pick the spin up, you anticipate that it might break towards you and down a little bit. You start your swing, but if it doesn't do that, then you're kind of left in the same position Jake was in. Uh, it's pretty tough to anticipate a bad pitch like that. It is. <laughs> if you could, yeah, if you can anticipate a backup slider, you have <laughs> you have better eyes than Ted Williams. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis 0 for 3 today is uh, popped out a couple of times and fly to right field. One ball, one strike. Okay, so a slider spins, right. and a backup slider spins. Why does one curve and one backs up? Doesn't spin enough? Or doesn't spin fast enough? I can't tell you. I don't know why. It has to do with the, with the release point, but I don't know why that is. Yeah. Actually, if you could throw a backup slider on purpose, you could have, there could be another pitch for you. Yeah, we could, yeah. You gotta be careful who you throw it to. Yeah, where you, where you throw it. If you throw it right down the middle of the plate, it's like a batting practice fastball, I guess. I think that the spin that you were talking about probably has a lot to do with it. You don't make it spin quickly enough and then hang on to it quite long enough. Yeah. One and two to Elvis. That base is full with two outs here in the eighth inning. Rangers trying to put a dent in that 10 to 1 Angel lead. Another foul out of play. Well, Adam Wilk hasn't exactly had a, a crisp inning. He's uh, working on pitch number 25 coming up. He's uh, hit Rudnett Odor, giving up a base hit to Mitch Moreland and walked Prince Fielder. Got the ground out and a strikeout. Got him swinging. Take that two strikeouts. The Rangers leave the bases full on a hit. And a hit batter and a walk. On to the ninth inning we go. 10 to 1, Los Angeles. They want to take this game and this series over the Angels trailing 10-1 as we head to the ninth. And we get you ready for the first of that long road trip for you guys as the Rangers head out west to take on the Seattle Mariners. 
facing off against former teammate Nelson Cruz in a new uniform this season. Off to a very hot start at the plate. Hopefully, Nelly will cool off for a bit and the Rangers will heat up. Things get going on Friday right here on Fox Sports Southwest. All this wonderful information brought to you by at and Hubers, guys. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, boy, Nelly Cruz. Four straight games with a home run. Five all together. Stolmi Pimentel is on now for his second outing as a Ranger on Monday against these Angels. Two and a third innings, three hits, and a run. Pimentel, who was picked up on a waiver claim from the Pittsburgh Pirates, on now to work the ninth inning. Pimentel originally signed by the Red Sox organization back in 2006. Pirates got him in a trade that involved uh, Joel Hanrahan at the time. 25-year-old Pimentel goes to work to Efren Navarro and misses outside for ball one. Navarro, the only angel that has not reached base today either by a hit or a walk. He has grounded out three times and struck out. Puts that ball hard to center field. Pagaro back into his left. And gliding makes the catch for out number one. Carlos Pagaro. And a nice play and a big guy. He moves really well. He looks good playing the outfield. He's played all the different outfield positions. Very smooth out there. A one gone. And now Colin Cowgill to the plate. Cowgill one for three, a walk and a double. Pimentel yeah. drops that slider in for strike one. Oh, one pitch. Rosales. Across the diamond, two out. Second baseman, Johnny Giovatella. That'll bring up Johnny Giovatella. Now, the Rangers getting uh, stole me Pimentel had to make a move, and uh, they transferred Luis Alberto Bonilla from the 15 to the 60 day list. And a note on him, he decided to go ahead and have Tommy John surgery to reconstruct that. Uh, Number collateral ligament in his uh, elbow. He had been shut down since the end of spring training. And that's uh, second Ranger that has been shut down with the Tommy John. Of course, you Darvish had that right at the beginning of camp. There's you. We got that brace on his uh, elbow doing. Uh, all the rehab, it's a slow process, but one that uh, is very successful if, if things go right. One ball, two strikes to Giovatella. Angel second baseman, a couple of hits in four trips. Pimentel back to the plate. Didn't miss by much. Now the 2 2. Pimentel was uh, designated for assignment by the Pirates. Last day uh, when, the, when the Pirates had to make their final cuts to get down to the 25-man active roster. Elvis, a jump throw in the dirt, dug out by Mitch Borland. Fancy play on both ends. And Pimentel has a 1-2-3-9 finish. Rangers will come to bat in the bottom of the ninth, trailing 10-1.
Talk is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now on southwest.com. By AT&T, UVerse TV. UVerse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by your Texas Ford dealer. The EcoBoost Challenge is on at your Texas Ford dealer. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. Adam Wilk out for the, his second inning. And he is working to the bottom third of the Ranger order. Adam, Adam Rosales starting things off as a one ball, one strike count. Rosales has struck out twice and popped out today. 0 for 3. Wilk took over for the uh, starter, Hector Santiago. In the eighth inning, Santiago, seven innings of work in his start. Again, a great outing in this ballpark. Four hits, one run. We're now in four of the five games that uh, Santiago has pitched in this ballpark. He's allowed just one run in each of them. Now three and two to Rosales. Wilk back to the plate. And a little number foul. And we'll try it again. I mentioned Jay Happ starting for the Mariners on Friday against the Rangers. That ball is pounded to left field. Going back is Joyce. He's looking up. Goodbye. Rosales with his first home run of the year, his first hit of the year. It's a 10 to 2 Angel League. A couple of Rangers had their first hit. Jake Smolinski smoked the double his first time up for his first hit. Oh, as well with the Angel bullpen. We saw that from Adam last year. He showed some pretty good power last year when he was in that streak for about a month and a half. He was hitting everything hard. He has a good fastball to hit right in the center square. Halfway back to the wall in the Angel bullpen. Yeah, Carlos Peguero, his first at bat of the afternoon, takes outside for ball one. There is a strike. 402 feet, the uh, measurement of Adam Rosales' blast. To left field. Troy circling around underneath it. And that is out number one. And we'll be out a second. Let's check in with Aaron Hardigan for a preview of Rangers Live. All right, thanks, Buzz. We see Rosie there added to what was the only Rangers run up to that point this afternoon. Carlos Corporan putting an end to the shutout back in the fifth with his first home run of the season. He coincidentally was Pudge's player to watch this afternoon, so we'll get Pudge's reaction on that coming up on the post-game show. We'll also have Jeff Bannister and Mark McLemore talking about the series in Seattle. It's all coming up, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Aaron. Boy, Pudge can pick it, can he? <laughs> Now ball to short. And Carlos Corporan thrown out. That is out number two. Adam Rosales setting a new land speed record for a home run. He turns on the Jets going around first. He knows it's out of the ballpark. And he is not wasting any time. Now turn it on going around third. Gets the handshake. Zooming in 17 seconds from batter's box through contact to home plate. We'll have to we'll have to keep track of that this season to see if anyone <laughs> on either team gets around the bases quicker than Adam did. 17 seconds. I would I would doubt it. There's some been some guys take 37 seconds to get around the bases. Some but guys, I yeah. You know many that have gotten around quicker than 17 seconds. You guys take 17 seconds to get out of the batter's box after they admire it. Lionel DeShields, a rocket to third. Low throw, but dug out by Navarro. 
and that will do it. The Rangers get a run on Rosales' home run to lead off the ninth, but come up eight runs short. The final this afternoon, the Angels 10, and the Rangers 2. And Hector Santiago gets the win here this afternoon, and uh, Anthony Renato takes the loss. Aaron Hardigan and the guys will be back to wrap things up for you right